In 1901, sponge divers discovered a 2,000-year-old computer in a shipwreck, and it continues to baffle historians today. The story of the Antikythera mechanism begins with its dramatic discovery in 1901. While exploring the coast of the Greek island Antikythera, a group of sponge divers unknowingly stumbled upon one of history's most important artifacts. The divers dove 45 meters into the stunning blue waters, but that's when something alarming happened. Not long after they reached the bottom, one of the divers, Elias, wanted to return to the surface immediately. When he surfaced, the words tumbling from his mouth raised all the red flags. He was scared and claimed that he'd seen human remains and the bodies of horses. Elias's fellow divers thought that his bizarre claims stemmed from confusion. They believed that nitrogen in his air supply had caused him to see things. Therefore, the crew's captain, Demetrius Kondos, decided to take a look for himself. When Demetrius returned from his own dive, he held something shocking a bronze arm from a statue. There was a shipwreck below. Little did they know there was something very special on board. After the initial discovery, the crew didn't fully investigate the wreck. Instead, they continued on their journey to complete their sponge fishing objective. But this wasn't the end of their story. Once the season came to a close, they returned for the artifacts they'd left behind. Captain Demetrius ended up notifying the authorities in Athens about the shipwreck. Things were about to get very serious. In response, the Royal Hellenic Navy and the Greek Education Ministry joined forces with the divers to raise the most unbelievable pieces from their watery graves. The salvaging of the Antikythera wreck continued in 1901. The recovered treasures were jaw-dropping. To begin with, there were 36 marble sculptures of Greek mythical figures such as Hercules, as well as three statues of horses. Of course, that wasn't all. Divers also found glasswork, equipment from the ship, and bronze statues. However, in the excitement of all these fantastic discoveries, a horrific tragedy brought the operation to a resounding close. You see, decompression sickness was a major risk, and sadly, two divers became paralyzed, with one losing his life. However, the efforts of everyone involved shed light on a piece of history that still puzzles researchers today. It wouldn't be until 1902 that an archaeologist properly identified the most famous artifact from the wreck. And perhaps most surprising of all, it didn't look like much of anything. While closely inspecting the findings at the National Archaeological Museum in Athens, he noticed something unbelievable. One particular artifact was a rough-looking piece of bronze. Paying close attention to the details of the object, the archaeologist recognized some exciting features. A gear wheel in Greek inscriptions. This was the Antikythera mechanism. At first, the archaeologist thought the gear wheels indicated that the artifact was an astronomical clock, but the truth was that the object, especially in comparison to the other objects found in the shipwreck, did not make much sense at all. Based on what people knew about history in 1902, the gears found in this artifact did not match the time period of the ship it had been found on. By all appearances, it was not an ancient Greek artifact because ancient Greece didn't have such technological advances to produce such an object. This is why the discovery of the Antikythera mechanism altered the understanding of human history. The artifact's unique features seemed to denote an impossible time period, one that came hundreds of years after the shipwreck had taken place. At the time, it certainly begged the question, what was this strange mechanism doing on the ship off the coast of a Greek island? Today, it is generally accepted that Hellenistic scientists discovered the mechanism, though the exact date of its invention is not fixed. Created before the shipwreck, the theorized periods include 17 BC, 150 to 100 BC, and even 205 BC. For over a century, this historical artifact has been breaking scientists' brains. Decades of research have led to the intense fragmentation of the mechanism itself. Over the years, the mechanism has been deconstructed into 82 small pieces to better understand it. It is now a highly detailed puzzle that historians and researchers continue to ponder over. The first person to suggest what the object actually might be was a German philologist named Albert Rem. The Antikythera mechanism became one of the defining highlights of Rem's career as he suggested the object was an astronomical calculator. 
However, to understand what the Antikythera mechanism calculated, we first must understand how the ancient Greeks understood astronomy. Back then, the Greeks' understanding of astronomy came down to what they could observe by looking at the sky. Throughout the night, they studied the stars. These became known as the fixed stars because their relative positions stayed constant. However, these ancient astronomers also noticed that certain pieces of the sky did not maintain their relative positions, such as the moon. Unlike the fixed stars, these moving celestial bodies became known as wanderers, and they were a major head-scratcher for anyone trying to figure out the heavens. Greek astronomers couldn't quite figure out the reason why some of the celestial bodies moved in unpredictable ways. This was because, unlike our modern understanding of the solar system, they believed everything revolved around the Earth rather than the Sun. It is believed that the Antikythera mechanism's main function was to figure out the position of the planets depending on their cycles, as well as the movement of the Moon and Sun. Most impressively, the device could make these predictions whether it be a date from the past or the future. The existence of this device wouldn't be possible without the knowledge developed by prior thinkers, most notably Middle Eastern scientists. In Babylon and Uruk, which is modern-day Iraq, advancements in astronomy throughout the first millennium BC laid an essential foundation of knowledge for the Greeks. Babylonians had a keen interest in the movement of the sun, moon, and planets, and they noted down their positions on clay tablets. Their findings led them to a shocking understanding of these celestial bodies, that they adhered to specific cycles. Once they had tracked the cycles of these celestial bodies, they were able to start making predictions. According to a 2014 study, it is believed that the Antikythera mechanism incorporated many of the findings initially made by Babylonians. When philologist Albert Rem got his hands on the mechanism following his discovery, it wasn't long before he began making jaw-dropping revelations. Rem's unpublished notes revealed some of his greatest finds. One of the mechanism's fragments had a very telling inscription, the number 19. This number correlated with the moon's metonic cycle, 19 years. But this wasn't the only exciting number to reveal itself. Rem also discovered other numbers on the same fragment. They pointed to the use of Babylonian predictive astronomy, 76 and 223. The number 223 pointed to the sorrow cycle. The 223-month cycle used to predict the eclipses of the sun and moon. However, Albert Rem wasn't the only important researcher when it came to the mechanism. For a while, interest in the mechanism seemed to wane. That is, until another great thinker stepped up to the plate. Derek Price was a British science historian and professor at Yale University, and his work would yield even more answers. Derek spent two decades investigating the mystery of the Antikythera mechanism, but in 1971, he decided to look at its 82 fragments in a new and exciting way. Derek managed to go beyond the surface of the mechanism, which was all anyone could really look at for the longest time. Alongside a nuclear physicist, Derek used an X-ray to produce images of the 82 fragments. What they uncovered was incredible. The X-ray images revealed that the mechanism was far more intricate than they'd originally believed. One of the biggest fragments contained a whopping 27 gears, and that wasn't all. Not only did three smaller fragments each contain a gear, but the nuclear physicist could finally count the approximate number of teeth in the gear wheels. This brought them a step closer to understanding the machine's purpose. Thanks to these special images of the mechanism, Derek managed to shed light on its basic construction, the general positions of the main fragments, the front faces zodiac dials, in the back plates, two major dial systems. Three years later, in 1974, he finally published his major paper. It was titled, Gears from the Greeks. In the paper, Derek referenced several quotes by Cicero, a philosopher, politician, and lawyer, born in 106 BC. But one quote, in particular, was enough to give anyone goosebumps. According to Cicero, the brilliant inventor Archimedes, who came before him, had created a device that sounded shockingly similar to the Antikythera mechanism. In describing the workings of Archimedes' machine, Cicero said, on which we were delineated the motions of the sun and moon, and of those five stars, which are called wanderers. Archimedes had thought out a way to represent accurately by a single device for turning the globe those various and divergent movements with their different rates of speed. Archimedes' lifespan around 287 to 212 BC came well before the generally accepted period 
of the Antikythera mechanism. Therefore, the mechanism may have been inspired by Archimedes' designs. So, how did the Antikythera mechanism work in practice? Imagine the device in its glistening bronze prime, about the size of a shoebox. Its front face would have resembled something similar to a modern day clock. However, instead of showing the hours of the day, its many hands outlined the solar system. To highlight the five planets the Greeks knew about, which were Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn, there were most likely tiny pieces of rock or glass set into the front panel. There is even a rotating ball to represent the moon's phases. With its three panels of gear wheels, researchers claim that a wooden box encased the device. On the very front of the box, there is a place to input a date using a calendar dial. Therefore, the first step was to choose a desired date. But that wasn't all. Once you'd chosen your date, all you had to do was spin the crank on the other side of the device to calculate the correct locations of the night sky's celestial bodies. Even more impressive, you could input a future date. Therefore, the Antikythera mechanism was essentially an analog computer, and the oldest one we know of today. Why? Because, quite basically, it processed a variation of data. And like any good computer, the device also included something very important. Most research involving CT scans revealed something else in 2005. The back plate, inscribed with writing, was the mechanism's very own user's manual. Though there have been several attempts by researchers to recreate the Antikythera mechanism, none of them have been entirely successful. That is until 2021. At University College London, the Antikythera research team came up with a fresh approach to reconstructing the device. The team had a strong leader, none other than Tony Freeth, the filmmaker and mathematician who had produced the documentary The World's First Computer back in 2012. Tony and his Antikythera research team claimed that their model of the device was compatible with the data available to them. Their thrilling findings moved the understanding of the mysterious mechanism another step forward. Writing about his findings, Tony explains just how fascinating and singular the Antikythera mechanism is. It single-handedly rewrites our knowledge of the technology of the ancient Greeks. You see, based on the general understanding of ancient Greeks' history, its people were always extremely intelligent and innovative. Ancient Greeks left behind evidence of their brilliance. Take the Lighthouse of Alexandria and the Parthenon as shining examples. They even had advanced plumbing and sewage systems. However, when it came to their understanding of gears, nobody could have expected they had the technology capable of creating the Antikythera mechanism. As Tony explains in his article, quote, But before the discovery of the Antikythera mechanism, ancient Greek gears were thought to be restricted to crude wheels in windmills and watermills. The Antikythera mechanism, with its precision gears bearing teeth about a millimeter long, is completely unlike anything from the ancient world. Quote, Tony Freeth also questions why it took centuries for scientists to reinvent anything as sophisticated as the Antikythera mechanism, and why haven't archaeologists uncovered more such mechanisms. He says that we have strong reasons to believe this object can't have been the only model of its kind. There must have been precursors to its development. But bronze was a very valuable metal, and when an object like this stopped working, it probably would have been melted down to retain value from its materials. He continues on by saying shipwrecks may be the best prospects for finding more of them. And as for why the technology was seemingly lost for so long before being redeveloped, who knows? There are many gaps in the historical record, and future discoveries may well surprise us. The Antikythera mechanism is an excellent reminder of our fallible understanding of the past. We have to embrace the fact that we will never have the entire picture. It's impossible. And what's more, there are likely many things we believe in wholeheartedness at this moment that are completely false. For the longest time, archaeologists and historians thought they'd mapped out a solid picture of ancient Greece. Then, of course, they found the Antikythera mechanism, which threw everything they knew into question. And with one question, came hundreds more. Why haven't we found any more devices like the Antikythera mechanism? Are there more of them languishing at the bottom of the sea? And what other knowledge about ancient Greek remains lost to time, operating beneath the shadows of the unknown, and in experiencing the excitement of the artifacts we continue to uncover, there lies a world of possibility. After all, if the ancient Greeks managed to create something as complex as an analog computer, 
history likely has many more surprises in store for us.